Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Edward, and this is another episode of Is It Worth Your Money series on Gamers Clinic. Before we begin today's video, I would like to say a quick thank you to all of you who have been supporting this channel via your positive feedbacks and sharing your inputs with others. It is via these feedbacks and being able to help you guys choose your next gaming gear that makes doing this so much fun. So a big thank you to you guys. All right, back to today's topic. So a few months ago, I came across a great deal for some Logitech gaming peripherals and decided to pick some up. Having been a long while since I last used a Logitech gaming mouse and keyboard, due to my negative experiences with some of their products and bad local after sales support, I decided to give this brand another chance. And I'm relieved to say that I'm pretty impressed this time around. So let's jump in and... The details of the GPO X Super Lite. Surprised at how small the package was for a $150 gaming mouse when it arrived, I desperately wanted to know what's in the box. Upon finally struggling to get the cover off the box off, inside I was greeted with the mouse made from a very smooth matte plastic. The thing I noticed immediately after picking up the mouse was that 63 grams is super light. A lot lighter than I expected even though I have regularly used a Razer Viper Ultimate. It was surprising that 10 grams could make such a difference. Having an ambidextrous form factor, the G Pro X Super Light measures at 63.5 mm wide, 125 mm long, and 40 mm tall, which is quite similar to Razer's Viper Ultimate and the same size as its popular predecessor, the G Pro Wireless. The mouse fits comfortably with my large hands using claw grip or fingertip grip and not so well with palm grip due to too much drag from my thumb and palm that's still touching the mouse pad. But with the removal of the two side buttons on the right side, this mouse is more, now more suitable for right-handed users. Underneath the G Pro X Super Lite, the bottom panel has been slightly redesigned and the feet are replaced with PTFE feet that now covers more surface area to provide a better glide on mouse pads. Though, in my opinion, I think that it is maybe a little bit too thin as I still feel more resistance on my fabric mouse pad compared to when I was using Razer's Viper Ultimate. Also missing is the DPI switch button that was found on the G Pro Wireless due to weight reduction, so that could be a drawback for those who prefer to switch profiles or DPI settings during gameplay. At the front of the G Pro X Super Lite is a disappointing micro USB port used for charging or using the mouse in wired mode. The right side buttons are also removed in favor of losing weight and replaced with a slight bump to help with grip when lifting the mouse off during repositioning. As for the other contents in the box, there is a micro USB to USB-A extension adapter, a 1.8 meter charging cable, which strangely is not braided despite its premium price tag, and an optional replacement PTFE cover for switching out the default cover of where you would install the PowerPlay module. The cover is held together by two magnets, so whenever you need more glide, you can easily switch between the two covers. Also, underneath the cover is a slot where you can store the wireless dongle so it doesn't get lost when you want to bring the mouse around. And lastly, an interesting and thoughtful addition are four pieces of pre-cut 3M rubberized grip tape to stick on your mouse if you find the smooth mouse surface too slippery when your hands are dry. So a big plus to Logitech for including this. As for the technical features, since Logitech has taken a minimalist approach and only included the bare essential features, I will just be mentioning them as I share my 4 months later feedback. So let's start with the most obvious and the outstanding feature, the weight. I'll begin by saying that having used this super lightweight mouse over the past 4 months, it has kind of spoiled me and I don't think I will be going back to my other gaming mouse. As most esports manufacturers tend to make their mouse smaller in order to achieve a lighter weight, I think that Logitech has managed to do an excellent job in reducing the weight of the popular G Pro Wireless while maintaining a comfortable size for extended gaming sessions and most impressive, uh, most impressive of all, keeping the mouse wireless. With the well-designed chassis shape and size and the lightweight, when playing fast-paced games whether it be FPS or RTS games, 
The feeling when moving and repositioning the mouse became so much faster that initially I had to lower my DPI settings constantly to prevent my muscle memory from overshooting my targets. But after about a week, when my arm was finally able to get used to the new weight of the mouse, the biggest difference coming from the Basilisk Ultimate, which weighs more than 100 grams, was that it feels more accurate and natural to move the mouse to acquire targets in FPS games. With the Feather Lightweight, it felt easier to move and stop the mouse on targets more accurately. Although, this is purely subjective as each person will have a different feel and preference towards lightweight mouse, so please take my opinion with a grain of salt. And the best part is, even though the G Pro X Super Lite is weighs so little, the small battery inside was able to last around 10 days on a full charge with about 7 hours of usage per day, which is pretty darn good. But to achieve that, the flashy RGBs had to be removed, leaving only one RGB indicator light on the top that temporarily lights up to the color according to the DPI you're using and flashes red when the battery is low. Moving on to the Lightspeed wireless technology, it was flawless and I did not have any input delay or disconnection issues during these 4 months while testing it together with a wireless keyboard and headset at the same time. And waking up the mouse from sleep was also instantaneous. As for the 25K Hero sensor, it is a very accurate sensor with good tracking, but I think it is a bit of overkill as using this mouse over 10K DPI proved to be quite difficult for me. But still, it is good to know that the higher DPI settings is there in case you need it. Though, the lack of an on-the-fly DPI switch means that I had to use the G-Hub software to sacrifice one of the already scarce 5 available buttons just for this function. And talking about the G-Hub software, it is pretty easy to use and overall provides all the necessary options to customize your Logitech accessories to your liking. And it is also very easy to store up to 5 profiles on the G-Pro X Superlight's onboard memory. Other than that, there's not much else to the G Pro X Super Lite, but still making it an excellent gaming mouse in the super lightweight category in my opinion. The only thing I think could be done better was the previously mentioned PTFE feed being not thick enough, the unbraided charging cable, and clearly listing if they have fixed the common problem of switches failing prematurely found in its predecessor, the G Pro Wireless. But worry not, as I will continue to test this mouse and leave an update in the description section if I run into any uh, double-clicking problems. So overall, if you're a gamer that values weight above all other features when it comes to choosing a gaming mouse, then Logitech's G Pro X Super Lite is definitely the one to get. Equipped with only the best essential features needed in a gaming mouse and an excellent battery life, the G Pro X Super Lite will not disappoint. So yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video and thank you as always for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button as it will help this channel a lot more than you know it. And I'll see you again in the next video.